It's the takeover. It's the takeover right here on CBJ Radio. We're always bringing you the coolest artists on Wednesday night, and tonight's no different. New York City prog alt rock band Vajra. They've been around for more than a decade. They've been playing some shows recently. They released a brand new song, the cover of the classic Love is a Battlefield. We're stoked to have guitarist Dave and vocalist Anna Maria from Vajra on the show with us. First, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Man, you just played in Chicago and a couple dates in Pennsylvania. How'd the shows go? The shows were really great. It was so good to be back on the road. We uh, we had a good time. We had a really good time. So we're planning the next run now with our agent. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Now, you two, you're a couple. Did you guys meet from the band? Did you start the band? Tell us how all this happened. Oh, well, I was actually living in India at the time when we met. And I was back in New York for like a month just like screwing around, did a little work and and i went to this local bar that in new york city all the musicians would go to after the shows and it was called three of cups and it was like this underground awesomeness it was literally underground it was downstairs <laughs> it was like a basement bar and it never started to get hopping until after midnight yeah yeah so so i was there he was there and i was like who's that guy over there and i was speaking to a friend of mine and i was like can you introduce me and like oh that's dave from bile and I, so Dave used to be in this band called Bio, yeah. which is like a industrial rock, industrial, industrial metal bands. And I was like, hmm, let me, let's see what happens. And he came over and he spoke to me and he spoke well. He had a decent <laughs> vocabulary. <I'm> college educated. <laughs> college educated. <laughs> so not that you have to be, but like, it was kind of like, okay, great. This is, this is cool. And then the clincher was he said he spent his summers in upstate New York and I said oh really where and he said Sylvan Lake well Sylvan Lake is a place that I went to as a child because I grew up in upstate New York so for me what that meant is he knew what the sun looks like at about 7 30 in August you know at night yeah. and he knew what the smell of the grass was when it was freshly cut and he knew what the leaves looked like in july you know in the middle of july so for me that stuff was very important because yeah. there were um foundational um i guess i don't know foundational elements of what a tree looks like what a leaf looks like what grass smells like what the sunset looks like in the summer all of that stuff were key points that we had in common that i thought were very important to me yeah so um we kept in touch he was in some other bands and um then eventually i needed a guitarist and i put an ad out and he responded and said you know i'm interested in this thing what band is it right so the ad was like I, there's it a was band, kind of cryptic, I know, it you know. was cryptic there's a band that needs a guitar player and i was playing bass Get in a couple in of bands at that point I, I i had left bile and a couple of other bands playing guitar and i was playing bass but i wanted to play guitar again and i'm like what bands maybe maybe i'll i'll be interested i don't know is this something i i would you know like to do i was like so. it's and he and I'm like, oh my God, Dave Sussman wants to be my band. Oh my God, <laughs> this is so cool. And then he was like, yeah, like send me the music. I'll I'll take a look and come down and audition and see how it goes. So and I, have, I have to stop her here. I She sent me Pleroma, the first album. And I absolutely loved every song. I loved it. The guitars were amazing. It It is such a full featured guitar album even though it's a lot of bass and drum and and rhythm that i i said to myself you know i, I have this pedal board of effects that i love to use i can actually make artistic use of my stuff and try to recreate these guitar parts live which we've been you know doing um and and it's so much fun to do and i loved every song and i was i was a huge fan just by listening to the music and i was like by the time i came down to play i knew every song you know in in my head and i knew a bunch of them you know on guitar so wow that's, uh, he to say he did a great job and of course they wanted he brought a lot of uh feel to the band that we needed so my original guitarist will doll 
um, was is is amazing. He's we're actually going to a, his birthday party this weekend. He's but still a good friend. Still a good <laughs> friend. He's just um, he was so good. And then I had a fill in guy who was really technically proficient, um, but didn't have so much feel. Yeah. And when Dave came in, it was just oozing with this vibe. So it was just a really great fit and really cool and something that we needed. Uh, musically, his uh, his spice is what we needed musically. I'm pretty spicy. <laughs> He's pretty spicy, and the spice is stuck around. He's still there. Because I was going to ask you about that, Dave, because you're playing bass in the Maya video. Yeah. Right, so I'm playing bass in both Maya and Sever the Tie, and I think Crown of Crucify. I'm playing bass yeah. in all of them. So, so, you know, I was in the band as a guitar player, and around 2018, I had a little bit of a life change, a crisis, a little life crisis, and and I I left the band, and you know I I moved from the city, and I uh, you know I stopped doing band stuff. I just needed to change. Um, but then you know I went to see she had gotten another band, another you know a bunch of guys together, and. Um, I went to see the band at the Gramercy Theater and I was in the audience and I was like, you know, they look, they look and sound great, you know, <laughs> but, but I said, I, you know, I started coming around as uh, her phone's ringing. We're going to put oh, it on fine. silent. I started coming around to just hang out with her. We would have dinner together. We would, we would, you know, just, just be chilling out as friends. And eventually, I don't know, we had a glass of wine and she's like, you want to come back to the band, don't you? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, but wait a minute. There's something that you didn't mention. So we were playing at the Gramercy Theater in New York and he was not there. And I had called him to come play this show with us and he never got back to me. I never got the message. I don't know what happened. I just, I don't know. I would have played. I would have played. But, you know, maybe, so, maybe. So he shows up to the show. I showed up to the show. I was in the audience. And I'm on stage. And I look. She didn't know I was coming. I paid to get in. Everything. And I look out at the audience, and I see for some reason spot him immediately. You can't always see everybody in the audience, right? But like, he kind of sticks out a little bit, maybe. But Uh, like the source of. (laughs) So he walks in, and I was like, "Oh, I see somebody I recognize just walked in from the stage," and he just was like. Oh. <laughs> and walks right up to the back. I was like, "Oh, geez." So then, after that, is when we started chatting, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah and then everything kind of went romantic. And then he's like, "I'm gonna join," and, and I had two guitarists that were playing with me at the moment. So he's like, "I'll play bass." It's like, "All right, whatever you want." And there was a bass player, but he didn't want to stay. So I was like, "It's perfect. I'll play bass." And and uh, he moved. Right, right. He moved right. to Alabama or something. Like yeah. That. So I, I, you know, I was playing bass in a bunch of bands, you know, over the years. So I, I, I learned all the stuff on bass, which, if you listen to Pleroma, Inside the Flame, you know, a bunch of that stuff, even Maya, and and you know, um, just any of it, you can hear that the bass really travels in a different direction than the guitar. So I got a great opportunity to relearn these songs in a whole different light. And I was having so much fun playing the bass. But eventually the guitar players that she had moved on, as they do, you know, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's the thing that happens. And we couldn't find a guitar player. And I said, there's, I don't think we're going to find somebody that's going to take the care yeah. to put into what these songs need on guitar. So I switched back to guitar and then Jimmy, our drummer, found didn't find Jimmy, our drummer, was like friends with this guy John. He was friends with this guy John, who he's been in bands before, a bass player, and he's like, "Hey, my buddy John wants to wants to come down." And, and we're John's like, amazing. He's amazing, and super cool, yeah. and it's just like a perfect fit. So it just kind of all just meshed together, yeah. Yeah. melted together. It's really cool. And when when the drummer brings in a bass player who he's already played with, in that's the, the best. That's oh, yeah. the best thing. Yeah. So yeah, they've already got chemistry, which is. Exactly. Amazing. Yeah. Exactly. And it's really important because we're rhythm driven. For me, I want I, I listen to rhythm first when I hear music. I hear drum and bass first. Wow. Um and then yeah, I don't hear it. it's it's the guitar is kind of peripheral. It it moves things along, it's but it, but it's, it's more color. Yeah. 
for me. And, um, and I, I mean, I listen to vocals as well, but I never hear lyrics until maybe five times after I've heard a song. Like I have to listen five times to the song in order to hear lyrics. I, I hear, um, I hear like the melody. I hear, I hear the words as a melody. I hear the vocal as a melody. It's just another instrument for me. It's just the way I hear music. It's weird. Yeah, no, so. it, it's strange because my dad's kind of like that. He doesn't ever hear the lyrics. He always just hears the, the melody or, or the song or yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy how different people listen to music. We're talking with Vajra, yeah. V-A-J-R-A official.com. They're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. The cover for love is a battlefield is out now. Anna Maria, your dad was a monk before he met yeah. your mom. You've lived yeah. all over the place. Are you Indian? Or are you, w w what are you? What, what's your nationality? No. I'm one, I'm one, I'm American, He's but American. I am 100% Southern Italian. Okay. So you're Italian. So, yeah. 100% Southern Italian. So Sicily and Naples. So my Greek friends say I'm uh, Greek. And then <laughs> my, you know, people say, people are like, oh, you're Persian. No. Um, oh, you're, you're North Indian. No. <laughs> oh, you're Spanish. No. Yeah. So like, I get all this stuff. I should be a spy. Um, I spent five years living in India, so um, it's a it's a big piece of uh, who I am. It uh, really influenced my um, my being, and I went at a time when I kind of emptied myself out. So what filled in was a lot of what was there. Um, so comfort food is still Indian, um, friends, um, back and forth, and of course music. Um, was huge when I was there. So classical Hindustani is what I was listening to and the rhythms and all of that. And then of course I studied yoga and um, did a little of that. And I did a film, um, a feature film while I was there as well. Nice. So you're influenced, but she's Italian and you guys were in Italy for like two months this summer. Yeah, it was crazy. So it was, yeah, it was really, really fab. Fantastic. So we shot some videos while we were there, which uh, you will see next year, hopefully, fingers and toes. And um, and we were finishing some of the new music, which also uh, should be out next year as well. Again, fingers and toes. <laughs> yeah, you guys love shooting videos. What, what's your story with videos, Dave? Or, or you do video editing? What, what are you doing? I do. So I started doing video editing when I did a video called In League by Bile, which is my previous band. I had no idea what I was doing. I had a computer that crashed every three minutes. <laughs> I was using Premiere One, Adobe Premiere One, like the first iteration of it. The video card that I had on the home-built computer was sticking out the back of the computer because it was too big. And that's why everything was crashing. But it started my love of making music videos. I don't really do other kinds of videos, uh, you know, I, I'd love to do like a film type of thing, but music videos is what I do. So I, I did a few videos for that band. I did for other bands and, you know, it just, as the years rolled on, I learned how to do stuff like, I'll give you an example. There's a video that we just made um, maybe a year ago where her face melts at the end. Or in the beginning, I forgot which. It's yeah. either wind or or. Um, I think it was wind. It's wind. Yeah. So, you know. No, it was it. I'm not sure, but it's one of the one of the newer videos. So so it's 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 learning to do stuff like that without knowing how to do that, and that's my story with video. I'm doing stuff that I have no idea how I know how to do, but it's just doing it, trial and error, all that kind of stuff, and starting from crappy adobe programs and moving up to da vinci when well, um, we were a kid you started his dad had a garden, oh yeah i forgot about that a camera i had the so, super eight camera yeah so he started <laughs> young doing all of this i totally forgot about that yeah i started when i was like nine years old yeah yeah so i guess there you go yeah, yeah. and so what happened during covid was we had to do all these vi well we're like what are we going to do during covid right we can't tour um we need videos. 
we can't afford, we're still very small budget wise. We're funding everything ourselves. So we're like, what, what are we going to yeah, do? We, we can't, a crew we, we don't have a crew. We can't spend $10,000 on a video. Like that's just not in our cards. So we were talking, we've got this time right now. So we said, uh, let's buy a camera. So he bought this black magic camera and he switched from the Adobe system to black magic, black magic, black uh, magic. the Da Vinci, uh, uh, Da Vinci resolve, which come, it came with the camera. So I was like, let me try it because the native, um, you know, uh, uh, format of the camera is built for Da Vinci. Right. So, um, so which you, you moved into that. So I moved into Da Vinci and I, and I had, I stared at it and I had no idea how it worked because I was such an Adobe, you know, person. I will never ever use another Adobe product. It, it blows it away. It, 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 it is light on the computer. Uh, Premiere was crashing my computer. I have a supercomputer. They should hire him. And Premiere yeah. was crashing it. And, you know, DaVinci <laughs> runs like a dream. So so it was... So we figured everything out. We, we did, it, like, all did it all on the fly. So Maya was that video. And where was, we were learning as we were going. And like she said, it was during COVID. Was, so New York City was empty. It was amazing. So we got the Brooklyn Bridge empty. We got Times Square empty. empty. We got like a lot of shots in New York City empty it was really really cool and these are places that people normally have to get a permit and have to spend a lot of money to film <laughs> at and all this stuff you know how do you clear times square out and just get like the, the you know the the zombies who are you know i'm not going to clear out the zombies but it was clear and you can't go to times square now before three o'clock in the morning no without it being crowded and, and, crazy. and so so we we were lucky with that same, lucky. same with so, the brooklyn bridge and, yeah yeah so like all of that started then but then we all before that we did do 3.14 together we did so we did a video earlier from a song called 3.14 from pleroma and that was all with the iphone we did that on the iphone then. so we we started actually with that together and then for this uh, for akala we did all these other and i recommend videos. everybody checking out our video for 3.14 because i actually still love that song and on this last tour uh two weeks ago we started playing it live and it is an amazing it's part of the set. Song. It's a powerful song. And me coming as as a fan, I love to play it. And it's impossible to play because whoever, you know, decided that these chords are going to be the chords to the song is got to be a mad scientist. So yeah. it's, you know. I run on keyboard, basically. <laughs> and so that was the part of the problem. Paper so on the first fret, yeah. weird fingerings. Come on. I, so I was like, I'm, and I said to Will, he's like, how am I supposed to, what do you want me to play for this? And I'm like, play the keyboard part on the guitar and figure it out. And he was like, what? Cause it's in like it's B in minor, B flat minor or something, the key signature key, the key it is. And so it was like just out of control, but he figured it out and did it. And now he had to figure it out and do it. I'm, as soon as I put that cable on the first thread, I was like, Oh, <laughs> okay. We'll have to play it on the show. 3.14. Yeah. yeah, the um, water mix probably is. Yeah, on. yeah, water mix, three point one four water mix, which is like a, a radio friendly length. Okay, well, um, we don't care. Edit, and it's a great edit. That's the edit that we're playing live, and 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 I feel like it's it's a perfect, um, you know, version of that song. Yeah. So. Well, go check it out, VajraOfficial.com. They're on Facebook, Instagram, Facebook. Their cover for "Love Is a Battlefield." You're going to hear in just a second. Anna Maria, how do we like Dave? We like the beard or no beard? No, well, you can both ways. You know, this is just a good change for him because he had had the same thing for a while. So Adam, I said, I'm taking the You know, I got to take it to, you know, look at these things. I like the braids. We tried it without anything. I was like, it's got to be the three braids. That's, I have that's, to braid it for him, by yeah. the way. <laughs> and it's a little bit disheveled right now. But that's, you know, if she likes it, I'll keep it. I like it too. I have to. I have to he say, likes I like it. It. he's like everybody's looking at me different now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you feel? Like, have you had facial hair? Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like people look different. You look. You, they treat you differently. When I'm go when I was blonde, I was treated differently. You oh, know. Yeah. So I mean, yes, of course. It, you know, there's a there's a 
gravitas to him Gravi- now. A caveman gravitas. <laughs> that, uh, of all, all like braids. He's, he's the braid man. Braid man, caveman, Dave. That's that's what he is. Right. Yeah. Love is a battlefield. This is a classic yeah. song. You guys knock it out of the park. Who picked the song? Both of, us. Both of us. You know, I warm up to different vocalists and I was warming up to that song for a while and we were driving down the thruway one night and we just said, I, I said, we both were, I don't know if it was me or if it was David, we were both came to the conclusion, we're like, we need to do this song. Well, we wanted to do a cover song for a while. And what song are we going to do? And we're actually, the radio's on it. We're singing, she's singing to the radio and the song came on. And I was like, that's the one. <laughs> That's the one. We got to do that one. So, like, that was that. That was it. And then we wanted also a song when we were thinking about a cover song. We don't do cover songs. Um, uh, we we did do, actually take it back. We we do one cover song, and that was "Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun" by Pink Floyd. Um, and so, covers are you know, we're an original band. So, but we said you know let's just experiment with this and see where it goes so we wanted a song that we could vajrasize so we didn't want a song that didn't have room to 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 make it our own so this one we thought there is a lot of room because it's like from 1983 or something so we thought um we knew what we knew we had some ideas of what we could do and then we were upstate in my childhood bedroom and he had COVID, I think. I was really sick. Uh, I, I don't know if I had COVID. I had gotten the, the shot. And then I got sick for a month. So was it COVID? Was it a reaction to the shot? I don't know. We don't know. But we started working out the music there. So we started, um, it, I think you were on the bass, working out the bass line. Yeah. 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 So he was working out the bass line and I had some ideas and I had the keyboard in front of me. So then we were just working that out. And then um, when we went to record with Sahaj, um, he had some ideas for the guitar parts that he threw in, which was really freaking cool. And then uh, here we are. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's great. They knock it out of the park. You're going to hear it here in a second. I, I've been singing it like for two days after I, I listened to it a couple of times. Oh my God, that's so <laughs> cool. <laughs> and I, I have to mention Jimmy fucking kicked ass also because there's a fill in there that is like incredible. And he just, we that, that was another thing we should mention. It, in rehearsal, then the two of them were working stuff out and Jimmy just Jimmy was great. blew it away. Yeah. And, and, and um, so the fill she's talking about is right before the second chorus, and you'll see it in the video. Unbelievable. Um, he, he was, so when we went to record, he was sitting around for like five days because we did the drums, you know, later. You know, we, we played to the click. And he was like just antsy. And I was listening and watching. He, he did only like three takes. And when he did that fill... And walked out of Sahaj's, you know, um, drum room. I was like, dude, that fucking Phil, where did that come from? He's like, dude, I don't, I don't know. I, don't know. I was like, that's got to, when he did that, me and Sahaj looked at each other like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's got to be in the song. Yeah. And it is, obviously, yeah. you know, so, and it just goes, it goes, it just adds to the whole vibe of the whole thing, you know. It's, yeah. you know, what is the vibe of the whole thing? I don't know. We were just playing live with um, September Morning. We were on tour with them. And oh, um, Kyle was like, dude, I got to watch your set. He's <laughs> like, I love watching you play drums. And it was, and he just, did, you know, he just kills it. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy awesome. just kills it. So it's just, it was, it's really cool. And that feel is like just sick. Yeah. But. You're gonna hear it. We, we're, we're almost out of time, but Anna Marie, okay. you're, you're watching your videos, ha- watching you live. Everyone ha- must fall in love with you. You're a gorgeous lady. You just have sex oozing out of you. Are you a jealous <laughs> guy, Dave? Or are you knocking guys down? Wh- are you? What's going on? He's jealous at all? I'm the jealous one. <laughs> I know. I know who's going home with who. <laughs> You know, and, and, and it's like, I, you know, she's a singer in a rock band and she's a very beautiful woman and she's yeah. a singer in a rock band. So there's going to be 
there's going to be people that like that. And I, I, I love that. You know, I, I, I grew up in the heavy metal rock and roll world where this is like a dream. Oh, you know, so yes, she's a goddess. Go and check them out. Love is a battlefield. Anna Maria, Dave, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thank you. Really, it. yeah. Go and spread it. Spread the vag. It's Vajra. It's <laughs> love is a battlefield. It's the takeover at cbjradio.com. <laughs>